Uh, and we are moving to the last presentation. Our last presentation is an early career talk by Ludovico, Ludovico Carino from King's College London, who will present his work on should I care or should I work? How do pension policies affect older workers' well-being and intergenerational connections? Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK, yes. that's great. Uh, I would like to say hi to everyone. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I would be honored to be there in person, but I'm also happy that I can share my work with you. Uh, I think this this work I'm going to show uh, is, is following quite nicely from uh, Martin's uh, presentation. Uh, so let me let me just proceed. Um, I'm going to show you two uh, approaches that we at King's College London have taken uh, to add the, um, the role of policy into what has been already mentioned uh, uh, this morning. So we ask questions like, uh, in an aging society, one thing that changes is public policy, because public policy reacts to uh, the, exactly the demographic change for several concerns over budget sustainability, and several areas of social policies react and are reformed. We ask how these reforms affect the life of um, older workers or older people. So in this talk, I'm going to show you our approach in estimating, for example, how pension policies that prolong working lives affect uh, several dimensions of life of people. Uh, we can expect that a pension policy that prolong working lives affect the probability and the decision, the employment decision of adult workers. So their work, their income and their wealth. But I'm going to explore how uh, this policy actually is going to affect the health of adult workers, uh, if any, and also their other social activities that they do, uh, and especially caregiving. And then we are trying to estimate how it, this effect of the policy on adult workers' dimensions can also affect older generations. Uh, so we know that adult workers provide a lot of care, a lot of informal care to their older parents, for example. So if something changes in the decisions that adult workers make, uh, this can could reflect on the uh, life dimension of the older parent in terms of the care support that they receive. So the first question that we ask is, can a policy that incentivizes longer working affect the mental health of older women. We are going to talk about this in the UK context, uh, because in the UK there has been a recent pension reform that has increased the state pension age for, for women, the, the, the age, the earliest age at which women can collect their uh, state pension. This has been raised from age of 60 to age of 66 gradually um, for women born after the, 19, the April of 1950. This has had a huge impact on the employment of this population. They are likely to work more. So we ask whether their health can be impacted by this working longer. Theories, I'm a public economist and a social, I work also on social epidemiology. Uh, many theories uh, from sociology as well uh, tell us that there could be negative mechanisms of working longer on health, but also positive effects of working longer on health. I don't have the time to, to, no, to go deeper on these theories. I'm going to show you what we do. We use data from a longitudinal survey in the UK, the Understanding Society survey. For, we focus on a narrow sample of women in this first, um, in this first work, age 60 to 64, between 2009 and 2017. We, uh, this survey provides us information on the mental health of these women that are estimated through self-reported questions that are aggregated in uh, an instrument called uh, the General Health Questionnaire, GHQ. Uh, we cannot just compare to answer our questions. We cannot just compare the mental health of uh, women in work and women who are retired. We would find that women who are retired are more at risk of clinical depression than women in paid work. Uh, but this doesn't mean necessarily that, that retirement is bad for health because uh, there could be a reverse causation. There could be a lot of uh, endogeneity in this. So what our, our approach is different. Between 2009 and 2017, because of the pension reform, we can observe uh, women of same age, but with different eligibility to state pension. For example, someone aged 60 in, say, 2009 or 2010 is eligible for pension, but 
someone age 60 in 2011 or 2012 is not eligible for pension because uh, their, their pension eligibility rules changed. Uh, and this graph just shows you that if you compare in this time interval, women of same age, so age 60, 61, 62, or 63, but within the, each group, you split them between women that are above the state pension age uh, while being 60, and women who are below the state pension age while being 60, you see that the probability, the, the, actually the working hours of these two groups are very different. Those who cannot collect their pensions work more hours. We try to exploit this and ask, um, why should women of same age interviewed just at very uh, close distance uh, exhibit very different mental health if not because they, their work uh, incentive have been changed. This is called a difference in differences approach. I'm, of course, very happy to discuss this uh, more uh, in details um, if, you, if you wish. What are our, the results of our, uh, of our work? So, first of all, we find um, a general higher probability of showing high, let's say, general health questionnaire uh, values Mm, by 6.2 percentage points for those women who are below the state pension age because of the uh, pension reform. So making these women unable to uh, collect their pension corresponds to an increase in the risk of uh, depression, let's say. Uh, and then we find that this effect is much higher, actually, for those adult women who work in high strain jobs. Mm, so jobs that have low uh, job latitude and high job demand. For them, the increase in this probability of uh, exhibiting high GHQ scores um, is by 12.3 percentage points. So this model also controls for age, age, time, and other social demographic characteristics. What is the summary of this? People do work longer when their pension is increased, but there are also health inequalities because we know that women in lower socioeconomic status and worse jobs actually face a higher risk of uh, bad mental health. Mm, and there is, it's, it's very tricky to estimate what are the costs for the society of this, but there are some, uh, some studies that try to estimate the cost of depression, the cost of high, high depression, as I, as I mentioned here. So this phase, we are facing a loose, loose corner. So women in tough working conditions uh, actually face the, 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 the lower, let's say the worst, uh, the worst outcomes when they have to prolong uh, their work. However, they are also in low pay limited saving conditions, so they need to keep working. And due to their lack of qualification and skills, the literature tells us that for these women, retraining is very difficult. Second part of the picture, how does this prolonged working uh, actually affect not, the, uh, not just the health, but also other activities that uh, women, adult workers do, and in particular caregiving? So does prolonged working in older age reduce the supply of informal long-term care? Um, and what is the effect for the older person that should have received this care? We use on the same data set, Understanding Society, and we complement this with the ELSA database, the English Longitudinal Study of Aging. We use similar estimation methods, instrumental variables, and difference in differences. Uh, also, in this case, there are, we can have theoretical expectations, so we could expect that prolonging work would lead to lower caregiving just because the cost of time is higher when you work, you have less time, you need to work, but there could be more complex mechanisms. The type of job that you do, if you have a high demand, a low control job, for example, or not flexible job, uh, what type of care do you do you give? For, for whom? For your parents or for your partner? If you are an altruistic caregiver or not? If you have all their other multi-generational care responsibilities? Um, and the literature has try to develop theories on this. We try to give empirical evidence on what mechanism might be in place. What are our results in this case? We estimate through our instrumental variable approach that an increase by 10% in working hours would lead to a decrease, statistically significant decrease, by 3.7% in uh, care hours. So more work hours due to the pension reform, so people are incentivized to work longer, lower care hours. Uh, we also find that this corresponds to a decline in the probability of providing meaningful care, defined as providing care for five or more hours a week, and also a reduction in the probability of providing intensive care, 20 or more hours a week. For people that provide care, extra household, for, so for their 
uh, parents. Mm, the, um, again, as I as corresponding well with what we found before, <laughs> this is stronger for women in high strain uh, jobs and. Um, alongside the literature, we find the stronger results for workers that face sandwich generation care commitments. They are more likely to react negatively to working longer. The last thing I wanted to tell you is that we try to estimate what is the impact of uh, this on older people. So older people that are already retired in their 80s or 70s, let's say, might have uh, women, uh, children that are below the state pension age, and then uh, the older daughter, for example, becomes eligible for pension. Uh, how does this affect the amount of care that older people receive? Because the state pension age reform postponed this movement, no? made women, made daughters retire later. So uh, what we find very briefly is that when the oldest daughter in the household uh, cannot retire, cannot collect their pension, the older parent or the parents receive less amount of help. Overall, so what we conclude from this is that women, the daughters, cannot provide the same amount of care because they have to work longer. And no one else jumps in to compensate this reduction. So our implication is that there might be overlooked effects for social policies, especially pension policies, on population welfare and therefore on quality of lives. There are inequalities that we need to account for. And basically, Aging policies should not happen in institutional silos. So pension policies should take into account their effect on the social care, for example, and the health care um, aspect of uh, people, uh, people's lives. And I'll stop here because I'm uh, a little bit over time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this very informative uh, presentation. Um, actually, I think we don't have time for questions. Do we have? No. Okay, so we don't have time for questions. Thank you very much to all the speakers and all the uh, people who join us, both personally and virtually. And I hope for everyone who is in the UK to uh, be able to meet you soon in Israel. Enjoy the break and lunch. Thank you. <laughs>